welcome to a special edition of a floss tube. Mm, what are we? Are we a mix? Are we a, a mash? A mashup? A mashup? A mashup. Like that. Okay, we're a mashup. Okay, Jan, say hello. Hello, everybody. This is Jan of Jan X Creates. And Michelle. <laughs> hey, y'all. Michelle G here, Bendy Stitchy. And Jean Ferris with Jean Ferris Needle Works. So, we have a huge special announcement to make, and we decided the best way to do it would be to do it together. So here we are. Mm -hmm. um, okay, a little bit of backstory. As I was driving up to Stitch North and thinking about how cold it was going to be up there, and I started <laughs> thinking about warm weather, even though it was May, I mean, I knew that it would be cold in, in Canada. I thought, you know, it would really be nice to have a retreat that was on a ship. And what would really be fun would be to invite a couple of other floss tubers um, to join me. And lo and behold, I had I had already sort of known Jan because I've been watching her floss tubes since the very <laughs> beginning. Um, and I met Michelle at Sitch North. And Michelle didn't know this when I was chatting with her, but the whole time I'm I'm standing there thinking, hmm, I think she would be a good person to <laughs> do this cruise with. <laughs> you didn't know that did you I didn't know that <laughs> yeah so um you know I sort of percolated with the idea and uh ran it by a couple of friends of mine who do cruises and retreats and they thought it was a good idea too so because I have a lot of good ideas that are not good ideas so I always like to like run them by somebody so um so driving home which was like about 12 hours in the car I uh I really had time to think about this. And so by the time I got home, I was on the phone. Actually, I think I stopped at a rest area and called my salesperson at Celebrity and said, can you please check out and see if we can find a cruise in the Caribbean where it's going to be warm in January that has a meeting room that would be large enough for our group? And the answer was yes. So that's what we are here to share with you. So um you can tell we're excited and we're hoping that that, that you're going to be excited also so where, where so where should we start all right let's start with uh when when is the cruise it is going to be january 14th to the 21st that's a sunday to a sunday and we're going to sail out of fort lauderdale which is a, a great city to for cruises and there is a cross stitch store in fort lauderdale as well isn't there yes there is cross stitch covered <laughs> um and it's it's um it's you can get an uber easily from any of the hotels to to the shop and between now and then i will talk with karen owen the owner and see if we can what we can put together maybe a little cocktail party friday night out on her porch uh the porch of the shop and maybe shopping on saturday because like i said the cruise leaves on sunday morning well actually the ship will leave in the afternoon, but you'll start boarding in the morning. Um, That's awesome. That sounds great. So, Michelle, I know you you had mentioned in one of our little pre-planning um, meetings that you had never been on a cruise. I have never been on a cruise. So um, we used to live in Honolulu. So we walked by the cruise ships. And you, know, <laughs> you look up and it's, they're, oh, they're mammoths. Orbits. Yeah. Just like so, another building that just pulled up at the dock. Right, right. It's like a floating so, resort hotel. Yeah. So yeah. I've never been on a cruise, but I love warm weather and I love cross stitching and I love cross stitchers. So I feel like well, why wouldn't not... I love cross stitching on a cruise? <laughs> well, a, a couple of other things you can put on that list is how about having somebody make your bed and clean your room every day? And do the dishes. Okay. How about <laughs> my preparing delicious meals? and having snacks available at no charge, just anytime you feel like having a soft drink or a glass of wine or fruit juice, or you need a bottle of water, you just go get it. Um, but I was gonna say what I really love is an all-inclusive. Yes, <laughs> yes. So let's talk a little bit about that because I, I'm gonna guess that there are a lot of people watching this who have never been on a cruise. Okay, so part of what we're gonna do is compare and contrast land, based retreats to what we're talking about here on the cruise does that kind of help me kind of get my head wrapped around you know how we wanted to do this so um on the cruise your cruise fare will cover 
the cruise, of course, all of your meals, all of your snacks, all of your beverages, unless uh, a few exceptions, like if you want top shelf liquor mm -hmm. and a drink or a top shelf wine, there's an extra charge for that. But um, it will include the meeting space. Um, and of course, the kind of perks you, you like at a at a retreat, like the little things you get in a swag bag, for example. And what we decided to do is we're going to each teach a project to the entire group. Um, and so the supplies that will be needed for each one of those three projects will also be in your swag bag. So that's included. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're really trying to make it completely inclusive. Uh, it even it even includes your tips um, for for the staff. Um, and also like Wi-Fi too, right? Because I'll need Wi-Fi. Yes, yes. Uh, it's include, going to include what they call their basic Wi-Fi, which is, you know, it works, as, you know, especially if, if you're going on this re retreat to unplug, you know, and you only need to check your email once a day or something, you're fine. Now, if you want to down, download movies or play video games, you're probably going to want to upgrade that. And also the entertainment as well, right? Good point. Every, every night there's... Um, a some sort of entertainment in the theater it can be a magic show it could be a broadway type musical it's just a lot of a lot of different things um one of my one of my favorite memories it was three cruise crew members including the captain of the ship who did the liars club and oh. they were hysterical um <laughs> so that's like in the main theater and then there's a smaller venue that will also have something going on. And then at various places throughout the ship, um, there will be musicians and um, hmm. dancing and um, just just all kinds of things. That's great. And we can reserve tickets to those kind of in blocks, right? So we're not yes. just stitching together, we're we're hanging out together. Yeah, it's like right. the whole day. Right. Know, and uh, yeah, I will talk with uh, my counterparts on the cruise ship and ask them to, um, hold tickets for us as a, as a group that so we can even sit together if we want to. So let's talk about, let's talk about the stitching room. <clears throat> um, I've been on enough ships at this point that I kind of have a feel for what the stitching space can be like. And frankly, some of the ships, it's very nice. It's comfortable. It's great light, but there are no windows. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting to see the beautiful scenery as, as you go by. So when um, we started sh shopping for the right crews for us, we looked very carefully at the stitching space. Ascent is the ship that we're going to be on, and it's a brand new ship. It has not even left the dock yet. Their first, cool. yeah, so cool. <laughs> their their first cruises are this fall, mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be exciting, and the conference space or the meeting space on that ship um, has a whole wall of windows. I think it's like on deck four, um, which means it's close to various places that you can, you know, get something to eat or drink and bring it back into the room if you want to. And, um, and you know, we'll, we'll have good views. As far as the cabins are concerned, there's usually like a selection, different levels of cabins. Yeah. That um, so I, um, I picked four different types of cabins for our group, um, just based on the experience I've had, you know, with with our Citrus Escapes cruises. The what they call the deluxe inside stateroom. These are comfortable rooms. They but they do not have any kind of a window. And then there's an ocean view stateroom, and those are the staterooms that actually have some sort of a window or a view to the outside. My personal favorite, and I think that I have cooked. Um, Michelle and Jan on this too, <laughs> definitely is what they call an infinite veranda stateroom. And I actually have some photos of my own the the infinite veranda that I had on a previous cruise. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. enter. I'm gonna put them in here when I edit, so people can see what I'm talking about. But um, most balcony cabins, or in the language of Celebrity Cruise Line, they call them verandas. Um, 
they're usually sliding glass doors out into like a little balcony. But on this infinite veranda, they are the kind of folding French doors that fold back into the wall. And if that wasn't spectacular enough, as far as that you, that you fully have access to your balcony, the balcony, uh, like, you know, for safety reasons from like, it's not really waist high, but let's say shoulder high down is plexiglass. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a piece of plexiglass that comes down from the ceiling and it can be raised and lowered like a garage door. So if it's a gorgeous balmy day, you can be in your room with those French doors open. You can have the upper part of the balcony. Um, uh, Raised up. Flat, yeah, open mm -hmm. and just feel like you're feel like you're outside if it you know if it's cooler or whatever then you can close that with those doors open you have basically expanded the size of your room mm -hmm. um, with that extra footage that uh, of the veranda or the balcony it's a room extension and what a view right yeah. and it's like yeah. you're outdoors yeah yeah, yeah that. And, and then we also have a couple of um, what they call a concierge class stateroom with veranda and for people who are avid cruisers, they're probably familiar with this. That's where you have, you know, services and amenities uh, added on to your to the basic part. The contract is built for double occupancy, right? So everybody with a roommate. If somebody wants to sail solo, they can, and um, we can quote them a price for for solo occupancy. But that's one of the things that makes it, especially for new cruisers. If this is very different from, say, booking a hotel room. Yeah. Um, you've got a hotel room with two queen beds. The hotel doesn't care whether there's one person in the room or two. But with ships, it's completely the opposite. They are assuming two people are in that in that um, cabin. And if there's only one, they basically pay double. Mm. So it's it's a little less than double, and that's why we'll you know I'll quote that to if anybody particularly wants to to sail solo. And bringing it back to the to the on land retreats, I know one of my favorite things about going to a retreat is my roommate. So you don't spend a whole lot of time in your room, but that, you know, going back to the room at night, that winding down time, that's a lot of mm -hmm. special time with that person. Yeah. So yeah. it's really nice to to go knowing that you're going to have a roommate is kind of cool. Um, the other thing, too, and this is one of the things I think that makes it a little different, again, compared to a land based um, thing is. There are a lot of things to do on the ship. So even if you were not coming to be a part of our stitching experience, um, a person is still going to have a great time on the cruise. So mm -hmm. that roommate could be a spouse. My husband. Could be, <laughs> yeah. Sibling, um, friend. It could be a, a mother, a daughter, a sister, a sister-in-law, a cousin, your college roommate. It, I mean, anybody who just wants to come. Um, and if they are a maker of some type, if they like to knit or do hand quilting or any kind of handwork, they are certainly welcome to come and, and enjoy the stitching room. And I think that's an important part mm. of this, especially if your roommate, for example, again, let's let's say knitting, um, you don't want to be apart from them all day long. Right. So yes, they can they can come into the stitching room and uh, and do whatever it is that the craft that they enjoy. Um, Jean, let's talk a little bit. We're look at the numbers we're looking at because it is a, going to be a smaller than most retreats. It's going, it's going to be a smaller, more intimate group. One of the things that I'm I'm waiting for a firm answer from Celebrity is about how many people we're going to be able to fit in that meeting space. Mm. Right now, I'm thinking that number is going to be at least seventy. It may be as many as 90, um, but for right now, let's use as a working number 70. Um, that would be, and, and we're gonna use the term a stitcher slash maker. In other words, regardless of what kind of handwork the person's doing, um, they're, when, they, when they book using the stitcher slash maker fair, then they will get to come into the stitching room and use it. They will always have a spot mm -hmm. and they will get the swag bag uh, and be there. You know, who knows? Maybe we'll convert that knitting friend into a cross stitcher. <laughs> they're, they're almost there anyway. <laughs> That's right. right. That I don't think any one of the three of us is ready to tell you exactly what that stitching project will be. Um, <laughs> 
But I can tell you mine I, right now, what I'm leaning toward is maybe a, a five by seven type sampler that would have a variety of stitches in it. But then I will also design it. So if a person wants to stitch on Aida and doesn't want to learn uh, new stitches, they'll still be able to do it. And I think I'm looking at um, something with variegated thread. <laughs> That's about all I That's nice and broad. Right <laughs> well, Jan, your your fans know that you have a lot on your plate right now. So yes. uh I I'm just impressed that with all that's going on with, with you, with your move and everything, that you are willing to jump in and do this with us. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. This is fantastic. Like I said, Caribbean in January. After spending a winter here in Idaho, I <laughs> not that I'm <laughs> in Idaho come January. <laughs> But yeah, I'm ready for it. Yeah. And I actually, I haven't told you, you all this. I've been talking with Leanne of Forbidden Fiber and I'm going to work with her to make my design using her flosses and then I'll be able to have a thread pack there and nice. it'll be great. She'll do, she'll do a couple exclusives probably for the swag bag and then we'll have more, but always a DMC conversion. Um, but I think it has to be Hildy. Hildy set sail. <laughs> So oh, I, <laughs> Hildy's my, my main squeeze. I'm always designing Hildy's. So <laughs> this seems like a good time for another one. There you go. That sounds great. So, I mean, if anything, I think we're going to have trouble narrowing it down to what, to what to put in that swag bag. And again, with great audio visual equipment, I feel comfortable being able to, to teach the whole room. Um, and what we'll do, we'll, we have, oh, that's the other thing. We haven't talked about where we're going yet. Oh my God. <laughs> We've just been hinting on it. It's going to be warm. It's warm. Be okay. All right. So we're leaving Fort Lauderdale and we have three sea days. Now, again, for the uninitiated, a sea day is when you're just on the ship and you're not docking anywhere. Um, so during those three sea days is when we will each, each one of the one. Yeah, I can't talk. Each one of the sea days, one of us will teach the group. Um, the ports that we're going to be visiting, um, we're going to be in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And when I was there last January, I, I did some Googling and I found an arts and crafts store that features the handwork of people that live in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just blown away by the quality and the variety of the things I saw. So um, and what's nice about San Juan is you get off the ship and you can just walk right into the city. You don't, you don't have to spend the money on an excursion if you don't want to. There's plenty to do, uh, great restaurants. Um, and I'm, I'm planning on going back to that craft store. And between now and then, I'm going to reach out to the owner and see whether or not they can do something like maybe bring some of those local artisans in that, to meet us. That'd be so cool. that, that would be fun. Again, yeah. that's an idea. It's not, I'm not promising that's going to happen. <laughs> so, so we leave Fort Lauderdale on Sunday. Monday is at sea. Tuesday, we're in San Juan. Wednesday, we're in Tortola, British Virgin Islands. Um, and then on Thursday, um, we're at St. Kitts and Nevis. And last year, I found a, it's basically an old plantation that has been, um, I don't know how to explain this, but they, it's a, it's a batik dyeing workshop. And there are all kinds of batik fabric that you can buy. Um, and they also do hands-on classes on how to dye batik. And again, no promise, but I'm working on us doing an excursion to that plantation. And plus it's gorgeous gardens. And then- and Jean, would, that, would that be an extra charge for that excursion or would yes, that be- Yes, yeah, a great question. Um, any any of the excursions off the ship that that you book, there, there will be a, an optional i mean it's optional and and you'll and you'll have a charge for that um because i mean even like i say in san in any one of these three ports of call you know if you're into snorkeling um hiking going to uh say archaeological sites um there's dozens and dozens of of excursions that the that the cruise line sponsors that you can choose from 
and and this one in St. Kitts, if it happens, then yes, there will be a charge for it. But to talk about excursions, like once people register with us, then there's usually a couple of weeks before I send the information into the cruise line and the booking actually becomes official on the cruise line's part. It's official on our part, but there's a there's a process that we have to go through. And once a person gets their booking number, I then send them their booking number. Then they can go on the celebrity website and um, actually see their cruise. And that's when they will, um, they can populate their their shopping cart if they want to with not just excursions, but also spa treatments. There's a wonderful spa on the ship, massages, manicures, pedicures. <laughs> Who needs to get off? High stone, <laughs> what excursion? You know, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, so, um, and so then that's Thursday in uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. And then Friday and Saturday, we're at sea again. And then we're back in Fort Lauderdale the following Sunday. It sounds like for us newbie cruisers, um, to go on this cruise, we're booking through, people are booking through through you, through us. And then yes. we're like you're like the cross-stitch travel agent and you do the booking with the cruise. Right, right. Okay. In fact, the cruise line calls us a travel partner because I'm oh. not officially a travel agent. Got I, it. I, I actually get little business cards like travel partner. Uh, travel partner. You can be my travel partner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Michelle, I'm really glad that you asked that question because this is a, a good time to point out that the only way a person can be in our stitching room with us is to book through us. Right. Um, if a person just goes online and books their own um, cruise or uses a travel agent and books it, sorry, but they won't. They won't be a part of our group. Um, and it goes beyond just the stitching room. It's also, like I said, the excursion that we hope to offer. It will be dining. Um, we can dine together as a group. Um, and I think that there's just a real value in being a part of this larger group. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the things that people seek when they go to retreats. Agreed. I think it feels like never having been on a cruise, but having been to lots of landbound retreats, <laughs> um, it feels like the the coolest thing about the retreat is the camaraderie with the other retreaters. Mm -hmm. And even more so with us here on the cruise, right? Because we're going to be kind of a little group inside of a giant group of cruisers. People are going to be all around us, but we're going to be the ones in the stitching room. Like you said, we can go to dinner together, shows, mm -hmm. excursions. Right. right. Yeah. And I think being a smaller group, you know, the only retreats I've been to are like Stitch Con. Um, that is so huge that being in this smaller group, you know, I think one of the things we're really hoping to create here is a really strong community. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is about, really getting to know each other and having a chance to enjoy each yeah. other, do these things together, but really feel that sense of community. That's what I'm looking forward to. I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. But the I, I, person is going to yeah. be great for that. Yeah. Let's talk about about prices um, because I I'm a consumer and when I you know need today I needed to buy a two pound bag of brown sugar at the grocery store and I looked at the price and I thought hmm what if I can get this somewhere cheaper so I I would I would expect people to check prices but what I would ask you to do when you check prices is like I I went online because this cruise is already live people are already booking it. And uh, I went in and they were having a sale. It was a really, really good sale. Like the first person in the room is full price. The second one was, you know, a big percentage off. Um, and that price looked a lot lower than our prices. And But then when you click through, then it adds taxes. It adds port fees. It adds gratuities. And the price was higher than our prices. And mm -hmm. that's without adding in wi-fi and the drinks package and the mm. swag bag they don't get our swag bag <laughs> right right and they don't get to hang out with us i mean really that's right yeah yeah no price um, on that. <laughs> or, or, or access to the sitting room right. so um so even for um you know just for value is you're getting the same cruise i mean that's that's not changing any 
And I'm so I would just wanted to add, I am notoriously frugal. And um, I was crunching the numbers because at first, I've never been on a cruise. So the price of a cruise to me was a little sticker shock. But then I got my little analytical brain on and I thought this is seven days, mm -hmm. accommodations, all the food and drink that I could possibly hold, right? And then the swag bag, the stitching room, which are usually included in a retreat. And then I compared that to how much I've spent on retreats, landlocked retreats in the past. And I usually stay at a landlocked retreat for four days because I add that extra day before the retreat. So I have one extra night in the hotel. This price for this retreat for seven days of retreating is only maybe it's a it's a couple hundred to a few hundred dollars more than I would spend on a landlocked retreat for four days. And right. this is for seven. Uh, I didn't and, calculate airfare because I have to fly either way. So that's a wash for me. Yeah. But and, and were you looking at that infinity balcony when you were making that comparison? I was looking at the infinite veranda because that's what I'm getting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because <laughs> let's yeah. also talk, let's talk about these uh interior rooms. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna be in an infinity veranda. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I know I know that you you both will also. Um but if, you know, there are some people, they're only in their room to sleep and take a shower and change clothes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, you know, a, an yeah. interior room or a um, ocean view room. Totally fine. Might, might be fun. Yeah. I, th I think the thing that is lost on a lot of people is once you walk out of your stateroom and you close the door, everybody gets the same experience. Yeah. It's the mm -hmm. same food in the restaurants. It's the mm -hmm. same, you know, Shows. entertainment in the theaters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't matter what type of room you're in. Right. Okay. Ho hopefully by now people are excited about this. So how do they register? <laughs> that might be important to, to say. Okay. That will be important. Yes. We are looking at opening registration on July 8th. That's a Saturday um, at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Is that on the Stitches Escapes website that there will be a link that will go live on July 8th. Um, but also, if you go to the Stitches Escapes website and go to the contact page, you can sign up for our newsletter. Mm -hmm. And we will send out a newsletter with all this information into it, uh, in it to everybody who's on our news on our newsletter. Um, and then the day that the registration opens, we will send a link to everybody by newsletter. So that's probably the best way to stay ahead of any kind of changes that might occur is to sign up for that Stitcher's Escape yeah. newsletter. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing I can tell you that will be different about this form than what we've done previously is there'll be a, a place where a person can can indicate whose floss tube channel they heard about the cruise. Because we're just really curious about that. Watch all three of us. They can put down all three names if they want to. <laughs> One of the things that I am thinking is going to happen is somebody's watching this and they're saying, I really want to go on this cruise. Michelle's right. I want a roommate, but I don't know who to ask. So my advice to that person is all the little stitchy groups that you are a member of on social media, be it Facebook or whatever, put it out there, put it on your own profile put it on other profiles saying, I want to go on this cruise. I'm looking for a roommate. Um, we do not, we will not match roommates. Um, that, you know, people kind of need to do this on their own. Yeah. And um, we have had experiences where people have connected in that way and have become like best friends forever mm -hmm. um, after having this cruise experience together. And we do have the private Facebook group Yes. That will be once people have signed up, that people will be able to kind of start to get to know each other there as well, right? Yes, very good. I'm glad glad you remembered about that. Yes, we always start a private Facebook group, and this one, the only way people can join is that they're, if they're, is when they're actually booked for the cruise. This is not where people are just interested in it, but just they are actually coming. And what we like about that is it's a way for people to start building a community before we even get together on, on the ship. Um, people will, because it's private, they can put in, let's say, their flight information and say, 
you know, anybody want to share an Uber from the airport to the hotel, mm -hmm. you know, all, all these kinds of things can, can happen. And um, once the registration process gets started, we'll, we'll get that Facebook set up, Facebook group okay. set up. Um, we also, uh, and when I say we, the, the Stitches Escapes team is myself and my two daughters. And we, we have some of this down to a science, but we, we send out a series of newsletters because there's a lot of information that people want or need to know about a cruise. And rather than overwhelming them with a big hunk of information, we send it out in uh, newsletters. We call them our 10th day newsletters. Like we might some, send one out when we're 100 days out and one when we're 90 days out and 80 days out. That's and each cool. one of them will have a topic that we will talk about, like dress code or mm. what the embarking process is like. What's the disembarking process like? So each one of them has a topic and that way people learn the details um, in, in little bites that are easier to, to absorb. That's really nice for us beginners. <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we love first time cruisers. There's nothing like being with people that, you know, their eyes are like as big as saucers of, <laughs> you know, of, of uh, you know, really just kind of taking, taking it all in. So that actually reminded me of the fact that people are going to be able to set up a, somewhat of a payment plan to pay for the cruise, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a very strict policy of a non-refundable deposit. It's three hundred dollars, and the cruise fares, which we're gonna we're gonna be putting in the episode um, details. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at that price, the three hundred dollars is not on top of it. So. Um, just to use an, an example, this the deluxe inside stateroom is one thousand eight hundred and forty dollars per person, and the first invoice they would get from us would be for three hundred dollars for the non-refundable deposit, and then depending on when the person signs up, which we're hoping they're going to sign up on July eighth, um, <laughs> we would then take the balance and divide it like into three payments, and um, if somebody didn't sign up to say September their balance might divide up be divided up into two payments so it just all depends on what you know where they are in the calendar of of because we we try to make it um as easy as possible um, and that's because you want to have the payment completed by a certain number of days before the cruise right? yes yes yeah. because with this contract there's a there's a date by which i have to pay the cruise line for everybody's cruises so yeah it's kind of nice for people to have paid me <laughs> People have to pay them. Um, yeah, but that's how it works. Okay. Great question. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what other questions. Now we have, um, Michelle, you're going to figure out how we, we're going to put this document. Oh, yeah, I will. So we have a document of kind of an informational thing, and we can develop a frequently asked questions too as we go along. I'll put that on a, a Google Drive, and I'll put a link so that we'll all be able to put it below our videos. And okay. you can just click on it. And that way it can be a living document and we can update it as we get new information. Okay. All right. Sounds good. One thing I did want to mention that I didn't realize, Jean, until you sent this sheet, I'm really glad that I just got my passport for Stitch no. North. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. First time cruisers. We have to have passports to go. Right. Like, yeah. Because really you're country. going to foreign countries. Yeah. I mean, not San Juan, but, but, um, yeah. St. Kitts and yeah, the um, other ones. British Virgin Islands, yeah. And British oh, Virgin Islands, yeah. Get your passports yeah. now. Uh, yeah, the, you 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 literally will not be allowed on the ship if you don't have your passport. So, and not a passport card. I mean, a true a, a, passport. a, a passport passport. Yeah. Um. So yes. So that would be um. Yeah, you've got plenty of time to do it, but don't put it off. Um. Yeah. And as far as where you can get passports the post office is a traditional place but also if you're in a city with a large university or college they very often have passport offices on their campuses and like winston-salem state here in winston-salem um has one because they have so many students from foreign countries and mm -hmm. i found that was the quickest way just i was just in and out in no time at all nice yeah. good tip but that that's just to submit your paperwork correct and get your picture taken. Okay, because you can actually, Mike and I just had to renew our passports and ours had actually expired. So we had to send in the old ones and get totally new ones. You can do it all online. You can take your own picture 
and they have very, very, very even clear. for even for a new one, not a renewal. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you really? Yeah. I went to the post office for, for nothing. What was that? I went to the post office for no good reason. You did. <laughs> so you've well, already it done it. I had yeah. to do it for Stitch North, so I'm that box oh, is checked. Yeah. I'm ready That's to right. cruise. Good. Yeah. yeah. And that mine, mine will expire before our cruise this fall. And, but I couldn't send it in to get it renewed um, because I had to go to Stitch North. So I'm like, I'm glad I didn't, I was like getting ready to send it in. I thought, wait a minute, I might need this. <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, you can do all that online. You can take your own picture. And I think, boy, maybe it was four or five weeks. It did not take long to get it back. We were we are very impressed with the service. Um, and by this time you have seen it because I will have the logo um, on our beginning of our thing. But I decided that it was time that there would be a floss tube <laughs> logo. Now, none of the three of us knew of anybody who's ever done one. Uh, and, and there may be one out there, but this is what I came up with on my own. And uh, Michelle and Jan gave it a thumbs up. So we're calling this floss tube at sea. <laughs> Yep. And um, this will actually be a chart. Hey, we can put this chart in a swag bag. It should yep. be there. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And exactly. Um, there may or may not be t-shirts. <laughs> I would wear one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. So we're excited. Um, we're going to have great food. We're going to have beautiful scenery. We're going to have lots of time to stitch. The only thing we need is you. So, um, get, get with your friends and start making plans so that on July 8th, you mm -hmm. can register for this cruise and we'll get going. Yeah. We want to see you there. We can't wait. <laughs>